What's going on, guys? So, the University of Idaho murders. That's a horrifying thought, right? That you could go out, have a fun night with your friends, come home, get in bed, go to sleep, and while you're asleep in your own home, someone breaks in, comes to your room, and brutally murders you in your sleep. That's absolutely terrifying. And I hope that whoever did this to these students meets the justice that they deserve. I believe that they will. This is a college campus. This is a college town. This is going to cause shockwaves throughout that community. People are not going to allow non-answers. As you've seen, they are updating the community. They are trying to keep everybody informed on what's going on. That's how every investigation should be handled. Certain questions you can't answer, certain questions you can't answer. I took the highlights from the press conference, put it all together here for us to have a quick sped up version with all the fluff cut out. We get right to the meat and potatoes of what's going on, what information we need to know. I'll come in, I'll give my opinion on what I think about what's being said, but for the most part, there is no speculation here for me yet. There is no anything here except for going by the facts of what the police said. The police have asked, hey, give us time. Let us do our investigation. Don't muddy the waters on this with a bunch of speculation and conspiracy theories. I oblige. I have absolutely no reason to believe that the police are not going to give everything they have to figure in this case out. I don't mean anything negative by this, but when you have upper class university students murdered on campus in their own home, that's gonna cause shockwaves. The other students are going to want answers. The police department cannot just turn around and brush it under the rug like Nevada PD does. When you have a lot of college students worried about having to come back to school and not know if they're safe or not, that's when the police are going to do their job to the fullest extent. Let's get into this press conference. Let's see what they have to say. Let's go. <laughs> We continue to dedicate all the resources to this investigation. We've had 646 tips, and all will be processed, vetted, investigated, and cleared. We've done over 90 interviews in this case, and the Moscow Police Department is utilizing the assistance from the Idaho State Police, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the Latak County Sheriff's Office. The personnel that has been assigned to this from the Moscow Police Department is four detectives, 24 officers, and five support staff. Federal Bureau of Investigators, we have 22 investigators in Moscow, 20 additional are assigned and located in the Treasure Valley, Salt Lake City, Utah, and West Virginia. We have two behavior analysis individuals from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For the Idaho State Police, we have 20 investigators, a public information officer, ISP forensic services, and, crime scene, and a crime scene team. We have 15 uniformed troopers to assist our community to help uh, provide the additional resources um, for our patrol. All right, so he's telling you right there that they have 40 detectives from the FBI, 20 detectives from the Sheriff's Department, four detectives from Moscow. That's a lot of detectives. I don't think that I could really make much of a difference here on YouTube, given my opinions and speculation on the case, unless we see that for some reason they end up not doing their job or looking over basic facts. Good afternoon. My name is Roger Lanier. I'm a captain over the operations division for the Moscow Police Department. Here's what we've determined so far. On the evening of November 12th, Kaylee Gonzalez and Madison Morgan were at a local bar and were later at a food truck in downtown Moscow. They arrived home at approximately 1.45 a.m. on the morning of November 13th. Okay, so Maddie and Kaylee are best friends. They've been best friends pretty much all their life, do everything together, have came to college together. They are the two best friends who were 21 years old, who were out at the bars. They're the girls from the food truck video. Ethan Chapin and Zana Kernodal were at the Sigma Chi house before also arriving home at approximately 1.45 a.m. Ethan and Zana were both 20 years old. They were in a relationship. Ethan didn't live at that house, but he stayed over at the house with Zana, which was his girlfriend. Two surviving roommates were also out in the community and they returned home at approximately 1 a.m. and did not wake up until later that morning. Okay, so these other two roommates, they're the ones that people were suspicious of in the beginning because they were in the house but were not attacked. Here's the thing. They were on the first floor. 
that house, if you look at the way the house is laid out, the first floor is more of a parking level. Maybe it has a bedroom down there too. Then the second floor is really your ground floor because the house is built on a hillside. So if you came in through the second floor, you would come in and you would be where Ethan and Zana were, assumingly. And then Maddie and Kaylee were on the third floor, assumingly, because they haven't released that information yet. On the morning of November 13th, at 11.58 a.m., a 911 call was placed to the Wickham Dispatch Center reporting an unconscious person. This is another weird aspect. It's a brutal stabbing, a bloody, gruesome scene. So how somebody can look in on that and call 911 and report an unconscious person is beyond me. The call originated from inside the residence and was made from the phone of one of the surviving roommates. He lets us know that the phone call came from one of the roommate's phone inside the house. He didn't say a roommate called, but he said it came from one of their phones inside the house. Moscow Police Department officers responded and located four victims, two on the second floor and two on the third floor. The Latah County Coroner has conducted autopsies and detectives have been provided with the results of those autopsies. We know that the autopsies confirmed the identity of the four victims, determined the cause and manner of death as a homicide by stabbing, and determined that it was likely all four victims were asleep during the attack. Some of the victims had defensive wounds, and each victim was stabbed multiple times. Okay, so this part catches some people up. How did they have defensive wounds if they were all asleep? But let's think about this. Ethan was staying over with Zana, his girlfriend, right? Imagine the killer comes into the home. He goes into the bedroom. Ethan and Zana are asleep. He comes in. Of course, he's going to try to go for the male first. Take out the biggest threat first, correct? So he goes in and he probably stabs Ethan in his sleep. That probably wakes Zana up. She most likely fights back, but still, she's overtaken. Then when he moves upstairs... I say he, I know it could be a she. Then when they move upstairs to kill Kaylee and Maddie, probably the same situation. They take one out in their sleep, the other wakes up, fights back a little bit, has defensive wounds. That's how one person could kill four people without waking up others. Now, as far as the noise goes, maybe there's fans going, maybe there's TVs on, maybe there's music playing, we don't know. We're not positive on how this could happen without waking up the other roommates, but you have to remember these roommates were out at parties, having fun, having a good time. Not saying they were all drugged up or drunk, but they were probably drinking a little bit, at least the 21 year olds. The survivors are downstairs on the basement floor, probably never heard a thing. Maybe the killer didn't even know that there was anybody on that floor. There was no sign of sexual assault. Investigators have determined the two areas of interest within the city and have provided maps which are on our Facebook page and on our website. And these are areas that they have canvassed for additional surveillance video and tips and have contacted several residents in the areas. The areas are generally south of Taylor Avenue to Palouse River Drive and west of Highway 95. Detectives have also canvassed several other neighborhoods looking for evidence looking for additional surveillance video and contacting residents and speaking to them to see if they may have heard or seen something. I want to address several areas of speculation, conjecture, and uh, misinformation that has circulated on uh, social media platforms and otherwise. And I definitely want to mention something here. Yes, I run a true crime channel. Yes, we talk about cases. No, I do not go in and start speculating before the police have an opportunity to do their job. Now, if something is very clear or something weird is happening, like in the Kylie Rodney case, or like in the Quentin Simon case where the mother has not yet been arrested and they've only searched the landfill, it seems, then yeah, we're going to come out, we're going to say something. When things don't add up, things don't make sense, when it feels like the police aren't doing their job, that's when I'm going to really get involved. Otherwise, I have no reason to add speculation to the case unless it feels like it's being ignored by the police. And this here doesn't feel like things are being ignored by the police, and it feels like they're constantly keeping us updated with any information that they have. And I believe it'll continue because this is on a college campus, and that's just the way things are going to go in this type of situation. We do not believe the following individuals are involved in this crime. The two surviving roommates, 
a male seen at the grub truck food vendor downtown, specifically wearing a white hoodie. A private party who provided uh, rides home to Kaylee and Madison in the early morning hour of November 13th. Additionally, the identity of the 911 caller and the 911 call have not been released, so any information out there is speculation about that. Investigators are aware that multiple phone calls from Madison and Kaylee's phone were made to a male subject. Any online reports stating that the victims had been tied and gagged are not accurate. And that right there is one of the reasons why I haven't commented on this case yet, because there's been a lot of speculation and a lot of things said that just aren't there. It's just not true. I mean, of course there's gonna be people who speculate and there's gonna be bad information that comes out. It's always best in a case to let the police do their job first. And then if they fail to do their job, then we come in. Otherwise, stay out of the way, report on what they're saying, give them the benefit of the doubt that they're gonna do the right job. Pay attention, keep paying attention, follow the case, make sure things don't get left unturned, but don't get involved to where you make it harder on them to bring justice for these victims. Detective seized the contents of three dumpsters on King Road and searched those dumpsters in an effort to find additional evidence, but nothing of note was discovered. Early in the investigation, local businesses were canvassed in an effort to see if any fixed blade type knives may have recently been purchased. And currently, there are no suspects in custody and we have not located a weapon. I want to assure you that every investigator involved will continue to put all of their resources and all of our partner agencies' resources into continuing this investigation. We do appreciate the community's support. We understand how stressful it is, and we will continue to work through this situation. Good afternoon. I'm Ted Williams, Fox News. Can you share with us why you believe they are targeted uh, killings, and uh, do you know who if any of the victims were the actual targets of the uh, killings. Um, as we stated earlier in the previous press release, uh, our press conference, we believe they're targeted um, because we take a totality of all the circumstances that we're looking at. Um, do we know any one person that it was targeted? Um, we're not uh, at, uh, able to say at this point in time um, due to our investigation. But Well, to me, that sounds like they do know if somebody was a target or not, right? Does that sound like that to you? Because that's what I just took from that. I don't know. They said they couldn't say because of their investigation though. So maybe if they let out that they know who was targeted, they might tip off the suspect. Furley from the Spokesman Review. I know you said you're not gonna release who the 911 caller was, but um, was the killer the 911 caller? I will tell you no. Actually, if we can just go to this one first. And what I'll, I'll say to that is um, it was made from the roommate's call, or phone, excuse me, um, and we're not going to divulge who made that call. Um, to be, um, it's part of our investigation still, and when we get ready to release that, we will. Hi, Christina Corbin with Fox News. Um, the male subject whom the women called, um, has he been ruled out as a suspect or person of interest? Everything that we have taken from, the, from those calls, um, we have followed up on, we've cleared, and, and we um, believe that uh, there's no connection there. Gotti Schwartz, NBC News, just following up on the, the 911 call, you said that you don't believe that's the killer. Uh, can you conclusively rule out the person that called 911 from inside the home as a suspect in this case? You can just ask that one more time, please. The, the, person, yeah, the, the person that was inside the home that called 911 uh, that was not one of the roommates, can you conclusively rule that person out as a suspect at this point? I don't think I said that it wasn't one of the roommates. I said that uh, it was used with the um, roommate's phone. I, I believe you know, somebody asked if that was the killer, and you said no. No, it, that's correct. Was there someone there other than the two roommates when the police responded? Will you clarify that for me? You're not, you're not confirming a roommate called 911, but it used the roommate's phone. So was there someone else at the home other than those two roommates? There was other friends that had arrived um, at the location. Okay. Honestly, I'm not quite sure at this time, to be quite honest. Do you guys have any idea if the killer's still within the community or are you looking outside the community for the killer in terms of their physical location? We are looking everywhere that evidence would lead us. Um, I can't say if the person's here, I can't say what community the person's in. Uh, we're utilizing every resource we can to uh, make that location of that individual. Um, and part of that is the safety of our community is paramount and that's why we brought in the resource that we brought in to keep uh, our community as safe as we can. Being so close to the border, does that make it kind of automatically an interstate investigation? 
I cannot comment on that. I, I'm not even aware. We look in Washington at all, I guess. For We're looking everywhere. Do you still believe this was this was uh, this attack was done by one perpetrator? And if so, how does one individual kill four people at night and not wake up the other two roommates? Our um, investigation will continue to look at all avenues of that investigation. Um, I cannot disclose um, any of that information. I don't even know that information at this point in time, and that's why we're continuing to investigate. You don't know how this happened without the other two roommates hearing it or waking up or no? We do not. Hi, uh, Angela Palermo, Idaho Statesman. Um, in the press release yesterday, you confirmed that the victims were found on the second and third floors of the home. Can you say which of the victims were found where? Um, I'm not going to go ahead and disclose that information. They were found on the second and third floor, and um, that's as far as we're going to go with that part of the investigation, too, because all those key pieces um, do come to play later. I can assure you we will continue um, to work hard. We will continue to do everything we can to solve this. So thank you. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt because they are updating us. They are giving us the information that we need. Let's see how they do before we all jump in and start muddying the water. Anyway, guys, like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Hit the notification bell so you can get notifications every time I post. Have a great day, and we'll see you later.